Hello there and welcome back to the Chemical Engineering and Chemistry Academy. Today I will be going over transport phenomena and fluid mechanics. Transport phenomena deals with the transport of energy, momentum, and mass from one location to another. There are many parallels between the three different domains of fluid mechanics, heat transfer, and mass transfer, and these are all included in transport phenomena. You will learn about all three of these domains if you decide to major in chemical engineering when entering college. Heat transfer you will learn about in thermodynamics. <clears throat> Fluid mechanics will be its own separate class. And mass transfer you will learn about in each of those classes. The first example of transport phenomena is the distillation of crude oil. This takes place at a petroleum refinery in which crude oil is separated by distillation into a number of fractions that turn into very useful products. 1 to 70 carbons make up individual molecules in the crude oil, and smaller molecules have lower boiling points, and these are separated near the top of the column. So the clean fuel gases would have the lowest boiling points, and sulfur would have a higher boiling point than the clean fuel gases, diesel would have a higher boiling point than sulfur, and so on, until we reach asphalts, which have the highest boiling point. So the different products have a range of uses, including propane for grilling, uh, gasoline and diesel for cars, and asphalt for roads. The second example of transport phenomena is sedimentation from turbidity currents. In the most typical case of oceanic turbidity currents, sediment laden water situated over sloping ground or in stable muddy sediment will flow downhill because they have a higher density than adjacent waters. The driving force behind a turbidity current is gravity acting on these high density sediments that are temporarily sustained within the sediment laden water. These semi suspended solids make the average density of the sediment bearing water greater than that of the surrounding undisturbed water. As such currents flow, they stir up the ground over which they flow, gathering more sedimentary particles in their current. This leaves the ground scoured and eroded. Once an oceanic turbidity current reaches the calmer waters of the flatter area of the abyssal plain, the main oceanic floor that is, the particles borne by the oceanic current settle out of the water column. The sedimentary deposit of the turbidity current is the turbidite. So as you can see in this illustration, the turbidite is right here. The third example of transport phenomena is chaotic mixing, which is a process by which flow tracers develop into complex fractals under the action of a fluid flow. If you are unfamiliar with flow tracers, a flow tracer is any fluid property used to track flow. The concentration of a chemical compound in a fluid can be used as a chemical tracer and characteristics such as temperature are physical tracers. So it's basically just anything used to track the flow of a fluid. So as if the temperature changes, if it increases, that'll increase the flow of fluid, for an example. If it decreases and get, gets colder, the fluid will start to flow a lot, a lot slower. So the flow is characterized by an exponential growth of fluid filaments. The phenomenon is still not well understood and is the subject of much current research. What is a fluid? A fluid is a substance that would deform continuously when subjected to a tangential or shear force. A few examples of fluids are a ceiling fan pushing air throughout a room. So the air would be considered the fluid and the ceiling fan would be pushing it throughout the room. So it would be subjecting the force actually onto the air and the flow of water down a river stream, the water would obviously be the fluid in that case. 
Uh, the spreading of peanut butter with a bread knife. There's an asterisk next to that because the peanut butter actually acts like a solid until you actually put force on it and then it acts like a fluid. So while you're putting force on it, it's deforming continuously. When there's no force on it, then it just stays solid form. Peanut butter is kind of weird like that. A few examples or one example of material that is not a fluid is the stretching of a rubber band. So as you stretch it, sure, it deforms continuously, but at a certain point, it just breaks. It, it, shat, it breaks in half. So it is not a fluid. Rheology is the study of the flow of matter. So some applications that rheology is used in are foods, paints, cosmetics, building materials, uh, geo applications such as avalanches, mud flows, and soil, drilling muds. Um, so paints, they have to know at a certain point when the paint will dry. So it, it, it's a fluid whenever it's in liquid, liquid form and you're spreading it. So at a certain point, it's going to dry and become a solid. Um, foods, what point is the chocolate going to melt at? There's just a whole bunch of scientists working on rheology in the lab and um, of course with cosmetics and building materials they have to know how everything is going to flow in a certain sense and I will make a separate video going more in depth on this matter as well so how do we measure the flow of matter for one we could place a fluid in between these two cylinders here on the left and if we produce a continued motion of the inner cylinder, this blue one right here, if we spin that around in a circle, it will tell us how viscous the viscosity of the fluid, so the willingness of it to flow. And if a solid is placed in the gap between the two cylinders, such as rubber, a given force might produce a small initial motion, but the inner cylinder will eventually come to rest. And I will produce a future video going further in depth on this topic, but for now, I'm just scratching the surface on it. Well, that's all I have for you all today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or just on your feelings on this video. Um, drop a like and subscribe as well. And check out some of my other videos, such as the process units or the chemical engineering videos. But... Um, all right. Well, goodbye.